God among men. The Word of God interlocks so completely that if you destroy any one part of it, you destroy the rest. That is why I have no place in my heart or in my head for a liberal, because the liberal insists on believing what he wants to believe, even rejecting what does not suit him. The result is that he has destroyed everything because each thing depends upon everything else. If you attempt to pull out this great simple truth, God is God, and that he had no beginning, and that he created all things that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. You unraveled the sleeve of Christianity until you have nothing left but a memory. It is essential to accept this truth. I know that many people do not accept this truth. Liberals deny it, and the materialists and certain scientists. But we do not care what people say. Our job in life is not to deny, but to affirm. And regardless of how it sounds to some, we affirm that there is another world above this world, of which this world is but a shadow. And in that other world, there is a throne. And on that throne, there is a God ruling his universe. There is such a thing as a Christian knowing God and meeting God for himself. We can press our way into the sanctuary of the Holy of Holies, and with our hearts, we can meet, know, feel, sense, and experience God in a manner more wonderful than any man or woman can experience any human thing or human being. That is what is taught here, and this is basic to Christianity. If Christianity is reduced to doctrine, that can be explained with no intuitive knowledge, no direct knowledge of the heart of God, then where is the wonder of it? I would not give a dime to support a teaching that denied the presence of God in his universe and the fact that the human heart can know God through Jesus Christ. Sin is a disease, deformity, plague, a blight, a treason, a rebellion, an error, a sacrilege, and a perversion. It is all of these things and so it can be no part of heaven. Sin is a sinister presence in the universe which God has permitted to be here for a little while. Its days are limited and numbered by the counsel and foreknowledge of God. When his good pleasure comes, he's going to destroy sin from the universe and beat it and chase it out of his universe until there is no sin left. The very first verse in the Bible tells us, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The universe is one. One creator, one universe. God created the universe. He made it as one. Man is created in the image of God. And therefore, when man came down to be incarnated, he fit into the nature of men as neatly as a man's hand fits into a glove. And Jesus, our Lord, walked among men, among flowers and trees and babies and women and men and horses and all these things just as naturally as he walked in heaven before he was incarnated. Because heaven and earth in the sight of God, are one. Therefore we give God the glory, and you stop worrying about yourself, because God made the flowers, and God will take care of you. I pray and hope that Christians might get away from the notion that earth is under a shadow far away in some deep subterranean cave of God's universe, and that somewhere far away, shining in celestial splendor, there is a city. But there is no connection between the two. The devil would like us to believe that, but I do not believe it for a second. The Christian who is inwardly alive and has the life of God in him will find himself at home among men and at home in heaven because he belongs in both, just as Jesus did. When Jesus Christ walked on the earth, he was in the bosom of his Father, and there was no contradiction between these two statements. The Christian is walking on the earth, but he is in the bosom of God nevertheless. He is in the kingdom of God. Paul said, you are in God, and God is in you. The Bible and nature bear the same signature on them, so that we can conclude that whoever made one made the other. When David looked up at the stars, it struck him how little he was in comparison to the size of the world. David knelt before God, and with his harp in his hand, sang himself a song to God. When I consider the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him? God's word is meant for all his children. This continent was conquered and settled by people who had never been through more than grade school. A McGuffey reader was about all the education they had, but they could read. And they did have Bible translations given to them by men who were scholars. And so they lived on those good translations and never even knew there was anything else. They were walking far off the sidewalk. 
living with God all the time. They looked out on God's truth and saw it as a child sees flowers. They looked at God's truth and saw it as David saw the stars and as Isaiah saw the mountains, direct, unmediated, unsophisticated, and unspoiled. All yearly blood sacrifice for sin was fulfilled when our Lord gave up the ghost and said, It is finished, and died on a cross. And what is taught here is that Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ washed the heavens so that there is nothing between man and God now, if man will believe it. By the blood of the Lamb, God washed the heavens so that there is a friendly heaven arching above us now. The blood of the Lamb has washed away the evil that kept us from God. Now whoever will come may come, regardless of how dark his stains are or how far off he may be from God. Any prodigal is the same distance from God as any other prodigal. We hear of rapists and murderers and all the rest, yet that rapist who rapes and kills in the park in the dark of the night is no further off from God than the proud businessman surrounded by his adoring family who reads Shakespeare and listens to Beethoven. All are sinners and all have come short of the glory of God. We are all without hope and without God in the world. Yet there is hope in God if we will believe. The scriptures tell us there is a way opened through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The rapist in the park, though we shudder at the terrible actions committed, can come home if he will. And the man who is up and out, he can come home too. The cultured sinner can come, and the uncultured base sinner can come. All can come because heaven and earth are united. Jesus Christ has washed away the division and the difference. Now we can come to God. Sin is still loose on the universe like a virus in the body, and the world is sick, desperately sick. But Jesus is a physician of souls, and he can cure us and bring us to himself by his blood. Our hope for this world and for the world to come is in a high priest, an altar, a temple, a tabernacle, a shrine, and a savior, by the throne above. This we Christians have. What bothers me is how we can keep so quiet about it, and why it is that we can take it so soberly, almost sadly. It would seem to me that we Christians ought to be the happiest people in all the wide world. Rejoice!